Welcome to the subcommittee, and uh, it's now your time. Great. Thank you. Um, thanks to the, the, the chairwoman and the ranking member, and uh, thanks to both of you for being here. Mr. Olivet, I, I wanted to just use my time to investigate and, and talk a little bit about the housing first uh, approach to, to, to this particular uh, problem. And I, I want to read something from the all-in plan in the prefatory letter, and you know, I just want to want to unpack this a little bit. So you write in that letter, the United States of America can end homelessness by fixing public services and systems, not by blaming the individuals and families who have been left behind by failed policies and economic exclusion. Now, I, I certainly agree that we all have to recognize that we're all a product of our circumstances in different ways, and you don't want to blame people for being down on their luck. But I also worry that the approach of seeing people, even people who are very, very significantly suffering, as pure victims sort of robs them of agency. And if you rob people of agency, the compassion that you have for them is not compassion for a human being, it's compassion for an animal. Um, instead of a human being who makes decisions, who's influenced by their environment, certainly. And I, I think that a lot of the, the housing first approach does precisely that. It sees people as pure victims instead of actors who, yeah, sometimes have very tragic things happen to them, uh, but also can do things in the face of that tragedy to rise above it. I, I, I'm curious sort of how you think about this. I mean, you're dealing with people who have had very, very tough lives, often cases, uh, childhood trauma, drug addiction, the whole the whole gamut of it. How, how do you not slip into treating them as pure agency-less victims? How do you treat them as human beings? Because when I, when I read this letter, I, I, I worry that you're not taking that approach. Thank you, Senator, uh, for asking a tough question. Uh, I start with a fundamental belief that we are all equal as human beings. We are all deeply flawed and beautiful and wonderful and powerful and broken all at the same time. That's true regardless of housing status. I've known many people who have experienced uh, mental illness and addiction who never become homeless. And I've known a lot of people who are homeless who have never experienced mental illness or addiction. Sure. And it overlaps a lot. And you, you I think, rightly mentioned the prevalence of childhood trauma, uh, physical and sexual abuse that scars people for, for decades to come for their entire lives. But I also believe that recovery is possible, and I believe that very, very deeply. And what I've seen around Housing First, and I, I said this earlier, uh, I was in this field in the mid-90s when we weren't doing Housing First, and we set up a lot of requirements for people. What I saw in those approaches was dehumanizing and disempowering. What I see when we can get people the stable foundation of housing is that they can live into their best selves. And without that, it's nearly impossible to do. It's impossible for people to rebuild their lives without the safety of a door they can lock, without the safety of their own bathroom they can go in, their own kitchen that they can prepare their meals in. And so I actually see this as fundamentally humane and, and empowering and very much treating the person as a as an, an agent of their own future. Well, I, I, I appreciate that. And I think that's very important. It's one of the things that I, I think often right and left talk past each other on these issues because obviously, again, we are subjects of our circumstances. We're also individual human beings with free will. And I, and I do worry that sometimes the anti-poverty lingo on the left very often glosses over that fact, even though certainly we have on, on my side our own problems. I want to just talk about the evidence basis of the housing first policy. And, and, and you know, I, I really recognize I'm short on time, but let me try to get this out quickly. So, uh, the first time I ever visited San Francisco, California, I thought it was one of the most beautiful cities that I had ever seen. And when you go to San Francisco now, when you go to the Tenderloin, or you go further south, you go to Los Angeles, you go to the, uh, uh, you go to Skid Row, what, what you see is a community that feels like, and in fact, if you look at the violent crime rates, are approaching something like a third world country. I mean, just unbelievably catastrophic chronic homelessness, all the addiction, the abuse, the violence that comes along with that. And yet, California since 2016 has, has, has supported the housing first approach to ending homelessness, even as chronic homelessness has gotten way worse in the state of California. One worry that I have is that the evidence clearly shows over the past six or seven years that that approach hasn't worked. We should be looking for alternative approaches, and yet I worry that what we're talking about in this proposal is to take the California approach and take it nationwide. I think there's a great evidence base that Housing First works for people. It works 85 to 90 percent of the time. And there's, there are randomized control trials over 20 years that show that to be the case. In fact, there are very few other interventions in the homelessness arena that have the degree of evidence behind it. But now, why, it why has California gotten so much worse if this works so well? 
we see people still falling into homelessness. I think if you look at the housing market, and you, you talk about San Francisco, you talked about Skid Row in Los Angeles. Uh, I was in San Diego recently, and their vacancy rate is 1.4%. There are no units. And so even if you have a voucher, you can't go get one. We see elderly people falling into homelessness for the first time because they simply can't afford the rent. The rent goes up and their income stays fixed. And so to me, if, you, if we look at the intervention that's actually working to help people move out of homelessness and say, but we still have homelessness, so that must be a failure, it's a misinterpretation of what's actually going on. It is working at an individual level. It's not working at a population level for two reasons. We haven't scaled it up to meet the need and we haven't turned off the faucet that's flowing into homelessness. Out of time, thank you. Um, thank you, Senator Vance. And um, I wanna just note that um, I appreciate, um, I, I'm not making a left or right comment, I am just noting that sometimes the language that we use to describe people who are experiencing homelessness is, can be dehumanizing. And we always talk to, about people as being victims or being vulnerable, that sometimes that seems to suggest that they don't, as you say, have agency and that they're not human beings with lots of assets. And so I wanted to just